Hey hey and welcome back to Calorie Creations. Today I'm starting not one, not two, but three sketchbooks basically at the same time. Why, you might wonder. Why not, I might respond. No, but these are three different kinds of sketchbooks and I think that keeping an array of sketchbooks keeps me more motivated to actually work in said sketchbooks. If I have only one sketchbook and I feel like using a medium that might not be appreciated by the paper, it might put me off from doing art at the moment. Making art or sketches or scribbles shouldn't be hindered by obstacles such as the materials. That is, however, a pretty privileged statement. Not all people have different kind of sketchbooks and art materials accessible and you can do lots of art with a small section of materials as well. I am fortunate enough to be able to have several sketchbooks on the go and I've also collected quite an impressive amount of art supplies over the years. I still use my very first watercolor palette that my grandma gifted me when I was probably eight years or so. But during the 27 years that I've passed since then, I have ac accumulated a lot more. I got off on a tangent there, but back to the sketchbooks. The ones I'm putting into my rotation as of filming this video are a Stillman & Burns Seta series hardbound sketchbook with 270 GSM extra heavyweight white paper and a smooth surface. We also have the Hannah Mule Cappuccino hardbound sketchbook with 120 GSM colored paper and finally a square sketchbook from Flying Tiger. No specs really available here. It has 50 pages I think. Um, white paper and I estimate the paper thickness is about 100 gsm perhaps a bit more. I already have a moleskin watercolor sketchbook on the go but that one has um, like structured paper and it's in a horizontal format and I want to try out the smooth paper in the Stillman and Burn and it's also in a portrait format so I, I, I justified having two watercolor sketchbooks at the same time. The sketchbook from Flying Tiger is going to be my workhorse, where I basically do everything. Sketches, study stuff and exploration for commissions and such. I've used a bunch of sketchbooks from Flying Tiger before, and it's not great quality paper or binding, um, but it's sometimes a benefit because then I don't put too high expectation on my sketchbooking. I started all three sketchbooks on the 29th of March and one thing I need to get better at uh, is to dating my entries, especially in the sketchbook that I might not use every week or so. I mean, if I complete a sketchbook in a month or two, it doesn't really matter if it was on day 5 or 10 I drew a particular piece, but if the sketchbook spans over like 3 years, it would be fun to know when an illustration was made. A benefit of starting several sketchbooks at once is that they don't feel as precious or intimidating as a new sketchbook can feel. All the hopes and expectation that comes with a new sketchbook can be scary, and I especially feel that an expensive sketchbook can be daunting and making me not want to use it because I feel as though it should only contain the best of the best and everything else is a waste. But you know what? A blank paper is the true waste of a paper. So how to start that brand spanking new sketchbook? Just do it. There are no rules. Start in the middle, work backwards, jump back and forth. Do you want to make an epic illustration for the first page? Introducing the sketchbook? Go for it. But does it feel or overwhelming? Save the first spread until you fill the most part of your sketchbook and you are more familiar with it. Or use the first page for color swatches and just get the first page paralysis syndrome over with. How do you feel about the first page? Is this just business as usual or do you feel nervous starting a new sketchbook? Leave a comment down below and tell me how you feel about sketchbooks. Something I did in all of the new sketchbooks and also my Moleskin watercolor album I already have started is to drip some Ecoline liquid watercolor on a spread and then closing the book. It makes a fun and interesting pattern and just like that, 
the sketchbook is in use. One thing I really love to do is to add stickers to the cover of my sketchbooks. Sometimes I add one sticker, more as a statement piece, and that's it. And sometimes I add multiple stickers, so I have a collage of happiness and inspiration. Stickers are probably my favorite thing to buy from other artists. I mean, art prints are awesome and gorgeous, but I have a limited space to hang framed pieces, and I foresee myself using sketchbooks forever and ever. It also becomes a bit of a time capsule. For these three uh, sketchbooks, I've added stickers from Lee Ellickson, Naomi Lord, and Sarah. I won't even try to pronounce her last name, but her Instagram handle is Illustratorium Sarah. Um, I'll leave a link to all of these talented artists in the description. My initial impression of these sketchbooks are as follows. The Stillman and Burn was actually a bit of a disappointment. The super thick paper is actually too thick for a bound sketchbook, so it won't lay flat and it's kind of hard to separate the pages properly. I think this paper would have been much more suited in a coil bound sketchbook. I haven't made that many pieces in the book so far. It handled ink and a light wash well, um, well ink and fine liner. Um, my little mixed media landscape also turned out good, but when I painted a bear using quite wet washes, the paper started to crumble. I need to work in it more to solidify my opinions, but so far I'm not very impressed. I think I might use it as my workhorse sketchbook when I've completed the one from Flying Tiger to avoid it becoming a shelf warmer. I wish the Hannah Mule sketchbook had a tad thicker paper. It feels a bit flimsy with its 120 GSM paper. Um, I would like to try the Stillman and Burn Nova sketchbooks. They have 150 GSM paper and comes in black, grey and beige. Um, the Strathmore Spiral Bound tan, Toned Tan Sketchbook is probably in the same category as the Hannah Mueller with its 118 GSM paper. Uh, Strathmore also have colored mixed media paper which is thicker, it has 300 GSM paper. But I know, don't know if it comes in a bound book or if it's just pads with paper. Anyway, the Hannah Mueller is a nice sketchbook. So far I've tried colored pencils, alcohol markers and fine liners in it. I'm gonna try to paint in it using gouache as well to see how it holds up to a wetter medium. But the main purpose of this sketchbook is to practice values since I have the mid-tone already present. But still, paper quality is kinda important. For me, at least. I have already talked a bit about the sketchbook from Flying Tiger, but to sum it up, so it's... It's a perfectly fine sketchbook, nothing less, nothing more. Uh, I do like the square format, the other ones are A5 sized, so this one gives me a little bit more real estate to work in. The inside pages are a little bigger than 20 times 20 centimeter, and considering it cost me 30 Swedish crowns, which is about two and a half pounds or three and a half US dollars, I think it is pretty much awesome. And if I didn't have a huge pile of unused sketchbooks, I would most definitely go and buy more of this one. In comparison, cost-wise, the Steelman and Burns sketchbook cost me 180 crowns, which is uh, 15 and 40 British pounds and about 21.50 US dollars. And the Hannah Mule came in the middle here. I paid 109 crowns for that, which e equals um, 930 pounds or 13 US dollars. That was a lot of rambling for a single video. Um, I want to know, what do you look for when it comes to sketchbooks? What is more important? The size, paper quality, the way it's bound or something else? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all for this video. I hope you all have a lovely day. Hey, Dua!